Hey, what's up? Hussam Mughrabi here and you are watching Vigitech. Do you know the most used sensors in the industry? What are their types? What are the physical properties that must be sensed by automation systems? Let's find out. In any automation system, there are different types of physical signals and properties that control system must be aware of, such as pressure and temperature. A sensor is a device that converts physical property such as temperature to an electrical signal, then it is sent to the control system by different standard communication means. There are quite a lot of terminology for sensors such as transducers, transmitters, gauges, meters, detectors, etc. However, these are for another episode. For now, let's call them sensors and let's start showing the most used ones. First, there is pressure. Measuring pressure in a pipe is important for process control. It can be done by using pressure transmitters, pressure gauges, and pressure switches. Pressure transmitters come in different shapes and configuration, and you can find them nearly everywhere in factories that are using pneumatic or hydraulic devices in their production lines. However, what is the difference between a pressure transmitter and a switch? What about gauges? This is the topic for the next video in this automation series. Is your oven capable of melting iron? Is your fuel temperature suitable for your igniter system? What about the painting section? Can it dry the newly painted product? You need to know the temperature to answer such questions, which are the daily discussion for such factory departments. Sensing temperature is done by using thermocouples, thermistors, RTDs and there are thermostats too, which are combined with temperature transmitters to send data to control system. Follow up the series to know more about all of these. Next, there is flow measurement. How fast is your pump? How can you know your daily production rate? Is your flow rate suitable for process control? Then you need to measure flow rate using flow meters to answer these questions. Many topologies are used such as differential pressure, magnetic, thermal, and more. To each one, there are pros and cons as well as area of application. Let's not forget that there are flow switches too. Level sensors are mainly installed over tanks to measure the, the level of their content. And then, control system can figure out the volume. Since there are many types of materials stored in tanks, there are also many types of level sensors to match this requirement such as ultrasonic, capacitive, radar, silo pilot, and more. For example, ultrasonic level sensor is suitable for liquids because they reflect the ultrasonic wave, but it is not suitable for potash powder since it doesn't reflect waves, thus silo pilot is used. Next in our list are proximity and displacement sensors. Proximity sensors detect certain objects over a known distance without physical contact. So if the object gets near the sensor, the sensor will give a signal to indicate that. Proximity sensors are used a lot in the industry and they are inductive or capacitive type. Potentiometers and NVDTs are used to measure displacement such as linear distance traveled by a certain machine. Number 6 in our list is speed. Rotary machines are the heart of industry and they operate many other mechanisms such as centrifuges, conveyor belts, rotary dryers, uncoilers, and more. Tachometers and encoders are used to achieve this task. They are mounted on the shaft of the rotating machine or along the conveyor belt. Tachometers use a different approach than encoders, and both of them output their signals to transmitters which in turn deliver it to the control system. Moving on to an important question. You have a rotating machine driving a load of materials in a tank such as a thickener. How can you know if you overloaded it or not? One way to do that is to use torque sensors. If your rake is capable of a certain amount of torque, 
then your control system must always keep it that way. Feeding too much material will make the rake work with more torque than it can handle and eventually might break. Weight is a force too and load cells are the standard for measuring weight. They are combined with a transmitter to deal with their signals properly and then send them to the control system. There are also many sensors that are not shown, such as motion, humidity, gas, viscosity, density, UV sensors, and more. However, the previously mentioned ones are the most famous and used ones in industry today. Stick around with this automation series so we can learn about each one of them. This marks the end of this video, I hope you liked it. I will continue making videos for this series, so be sure to follow up. Please like, share and subscribe, and if you are generous enough to support, there is a donation link in the description. We'll meet again when I return in another episode. See you next time.